With Definitive Edition being out for so long, I think we can all agree that Future Connected isn't perfect. Now, that doesn't mean you can't like it. That doesn't mean you can't not have been disappointed by it. Depending on your expectations, you either got exactly what you were expecting, maybe a little less than what you were expecting if what you thought you were going to get was Torna, or were extremely disappointed. As for me, I speculated a lot about it, even before it was revealed, and I came up with a lot of crazy ideas. Now, I wasn't expecting any of them, or even potentially one of them, to actually happen in Future Connected as we got it, but at the same time, it had Future and Connected in the title. I was expecting a bit more of, you know, some foreshadowing of a future game that's a bit more concrete, or direct connections, or multiverse shenanigans, or Zohar multiverse shenanigans, other than just what we got, which was, according to the devs, this is hints at the future, but God knows what that is. And, wait, was that a Gnosis? Are there Gnosis in Xenoblade 1 now? I don't know, because the game's over already. Regardless, there are things you can criticize on Future Connected that I will agree with. There are things that you can criticize on Future Connected that I will disagree with, but still totally understand where you're coming from, or agree that it's a completely subjective matter. But there's one thing that I just kind of don't understand. And that is... I have seen some people complain that Melia's crush on Shulk isn't brought up at all in FC. And that's something that I just don't understand from a point of criticism because of, well, time. I don't actually need to spoil the main game for this, but if you're playing FC, you probably have played the main game already, so me not spoiling it is kind of pointless. But regardless, in the main game, Melia had a crush on Shulk. She doesn't display any traits of having a crush on Shulk in Future Connected, so Clearly, this is bad character writing, when in reality, time has passed. This is an epilogue. This is an epilogue with a time skip in it, and a lot of things can change during that time skip. Future Connected starts out with a one year later subtitle appearing on screen to indicate that a year has passed since the main game. Now, by one year later, it's a bit confusing. Does it mean one year after you beat the final boss, or one year after the final cutscene? Because the final cutscene is already six months later after defeating the final boss. It could go either way, except for the fact that when you first boot up Future Connected, basically the first thing you get is a little sizzle reel of the ending of the main game to catch you up to speed if you haven't played it in a long time and are jumping straight into Future Connected, and then it goes into the one year later. This little sizzle reel shows clips not just of the scene after the final boss has been defeated, but of that epilogue scene that takes place six months later, which confirms that Future Connected is roughly 18 months after the final boss has been defeated. Does a year versus 18 months really matter in the long run? Can you get over feelings for someone in 12 months and in 18 months? Yeah, but the more time, the more reasonable that is, especially when we're getting into something later. Regardless, in the main story, there's already a point where it's pretty clear that Melia has given up on pursuing Shulk in any romantic context, and she still clearly cares a lot for him, possibly even love in a platonic sense. So, is it really weird to consider that she went from having a crush on him to still being very good friends and relying on him for a lot, and trusting him implicitly in that amount of time? I don't think it's very weird. Like... Feelings fading is a thing that happens, and at least in terms of someone you weren't actively in a relationship with, I'm pretty sure the usual time scale for that is a lot less than 18 months, so yeah. The only other thing that could throw a wrench in this is the fact that Melia is a high entia. She ages slower than Hams, so we could potentially not consider her progression in terms of that as being on a normal time scale compared to a human. The thing is, we don't really know how high Entia age. Does everything they go through happen at a slowed down rate, or is it just their physical and possibly emotional maturity that is slowed down? There are a few ways you could go. Is it, okay, their physical body ages slower and they mature physically at a slower rate than a Homs or a human would, but then because their mind is still running at roughly the same speed, they would reach the maximum mental and emotional maturity capable with that physical body at the same amount of time, and they're just basically waiting for their body to catch up to their mind, or their body to advance to a state where their mind can also advance, or is their emotional maturity stretched out on the same time scale? I'm going to say roughly five times slower high entia age, because if you divide 88, which is Melia's age as of the main game, by 18, which is Shulk, Rhine, and Fiora's ages, 
which seems to be roughly what Melia is, you get like 4.8 repeating, which is about 5, so we'll just say 5. If you divide 88 by 5, you get 17.6. So, in the main game, she's roughly the same age as Shulk, we'll just say. But then, 18 months later, Shulk is about to hit his 20s while Melia is still about 18. Like, an 18-year-old having a crush on a 20-year-old, that's not particularly out of the ordinary or weird. An 18-year-old dating a 20-year-old isn't particularly out of the ordinary or weird. But an 18-year-old still having feelings for someone after 18 months when they've already moved on, at least not outwardly showing them, isn't particularly weird. The only thing that could potentially change this is if everything Melia experiences is five times slower, as in processes of healing from grief or coming to terms with feelings for someone and just general emotional working your way through things like that as opposed to actively maturing and becoming a more mature person. If it took five times longer for Melia to process feelings and get over having feelings for someone, I could understand that, but based on how she handles grief and how she moves on from traumatic experiences, it seems to be that she gets through that at at least a reasonably similar rate to Hobbes or humans, so I just don't think that specific criticism of Future Connected holds any water, and if you're really going to dock points for that, I'm not really going to consider your opinion in the highest regard. Like, I can still totally respect your opinion if you disagree with me on things that are good or bad about Future Connected or any of the Xeno games, I just think that this criticism doesn't really make a lot of sense. Also, the whole having a crush on Shulk thing isn't actually a super big aspect of her character in the main game, so stop boiling her down to one of her more minor traits. Like, she'd still be able to go through most of the character development she has, even if Shulk was replaced with someone she wouldn't be attracted to. She's not defined by her feelings for Shulk, so stop thinking it's weird when the game focuses on, like, all the other aspects of her character that are, like, actually important in the long run. Yeah. And that's all I really got. So, uh, goodbye, subscribe, see you next time. I said that in the last video I recorded. Kind of liked it. That's not going to be my actual outro, but I'm using it again this time. And until next time, this is Luxon signing off.